Welcome into the lounge presented by DraftKings. We have the pleasure of sitting down with Kyle Van Noy. And Kyle, you know, you've been talking about and, and you know, other people who've been watching Ravens games have been saying he's been balling off the couch. <laughs> now you're back on the couch. Yep, yep, <laughs> yeah, yep. Straight off the couch, but now we're on the now couch. Back on the couch. Yeah. So we're going to try to ball on the couch. Yeah, all right. right? So, I did that a lot earlier <laughs> in the season. <laughs> you got that down. Yeah, I got it down pretty good. <laughs> so what, what's this been like? I mean, it, it has to have been like kind of a whirlwind to jump in, have immediate success, three sacks already in four games. That's yeah. pretty incredible. Just just what's it what's his experience been like you know honestly it's something that i knew was going to happen it was just getting the right opportunity i yeah. mean to go back even further uh I've actually had eight sacks in my last nine regular season games. Wow. Yeah, so don't shortchange him over here. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even, going, even going back to last year. So, That's quite a run. Yeah. So I'm, I feel like I'm, you know, in my prime. You know, a lot of yeah. changes in the NFL with teams just going way younger and whatnot. And right. I feel like I'm now hitting my stride actually mm -hmm. as a rusher and just as a player. That's cool. What What is it about? Like, is it just experience? Is it knowing your moves really well? Like, what is it that makes you feel like you're hitting your stride? I think it's just focusing on one position. For a long time, I played multiple positions, right. you know, wherever kind there was Bill an Bell injury. Bill Belichick defense, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, wherever I was needed, I went. And, yeah. you know, I performed at a high level, but I was never able to do one thing you know, really, really well. And right. I feel like now that I've been able to focus on pass rush and I'm able to do it really, really well. It's interesting. You come in and you've hit the ground running. Clowney, pretty similar. I mean, he got here before you, but yeah. but not too much ahead of you. And both of you guys have been like impact players for this defense. I'm curious to get your perspective. Like you've played in different defenses and, and been in different teams. Like what is it that has allowed you, and, and maybe it's just the fact that, you know, that you as a player have been able to do it, but wh why have you guys been able to hit the ground running so well the way you have this year? You know, I think it's a lot of different things. I think it's, you know, a team like which Mike McDan uh, Mike, Mike McDonald, excuse me, and Harbaugh is putting us in the right positions to succeed as mm -hmm. well as our coaches, individual coaches, Weaver and Chuck Smith. Yeah. They've done a really good job of uh, putting us and allowing us to be ourselves. And then honestly, I think it's just the chip on our shoulders <laughs> that we both have. Uh, JD has a big chip on his shoulder. Um, and I do too. Yeah. And we want to be able to make game changing plays. We've both done it in our careers. And I think it's just something now that the Raven fans get to see up close and <laughs> Uh, personal and we're excited to do it and we're excited to continue uh, that chip on the shoulder just like the Baltimore Ravens fan base has they have right. one so we're trying to emulate that that's a Baltimore thing that. yeah for <laughs> yeah sure. always the underdog I, I want to talk about that chip on your shoulder you know yeah. I, I assume that comes from you know where is your phone not ringing what, <laughs> you, what was that's it that funny. contributed to that chip on your shoulder <laughs> Honestly, I just feel like it's been my entire career. Okay. Um, I feel like, you know, I've been a very solid player in this yeah. league. Um, I've been paid at one point as a franchise player and then was having to be released a year later. So I just feel like I've always been kind of um, undervalued um, yeah. and underestimated. And then when teams or organizations give me it's like a surprise like whoa like we didn't know you could do this and it's kind of like well were you watching film or like what were you guys you doing me, right yeah so i think it's more of you know just me as a player being who i am and just having that chip on my shoulder and then continue to be the best teammate too um i think that's awesome awesome being here there's a lot of young guys and a lot of guys that are hungry yeah um you know, one of my guys already is Matabike, and <laughs> just seeing him and his growth since the couple weeks that I've been here has been amazing. And you know, that's my, my guy. We're always, you know, yeah. uh, battling each other and you know, <laughs> messing with each other. And I'm very excited uh, for him and his future. Yeah, in terms of that that chip, like John Harbaugh talked this week about you having a great start here and being so successful here, and he kind of talked about how everybody's motivated by different things, like. For you, do you get motivated by kind of what you're talking about, like this notion of having to prove it again or people doubting you or um, like is how do you internalize that stuff and use it as motivation? Do you use it as motive? Like what is the motivation for you? That's a good question. You know, I've actually thought about this question a lot lately, and I think it's 
um, you you enjoy proving people wrong, right? Like that's something every, everybody does. It's <laughs> yeah. what you guys do too. It's I what, love proving error. Yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't exactly. doesn't happen too often though. You know. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, this is good, uh, especially when you let the person like talk and yeah. you're like, I got the answer. Exactly. Like just wait. Exactly. Um, Fall into their own hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But me personally, I want to prove to the people that are in my corner right. Yeah. And that's kind of my focus, um, especially my son now that he's getting older and starting to learn a little bit more what football is and what dad's job is. It's fun to see him at a game and cheering and getting like just it clicks in his head. That's cool. Um, as well as my parents. I like to uh, make people proud and, you know, yeah, I, it's a it's a little combination of everything. And then me to know that. I'm still a guy that can wreck games and be a contributor on a team. And then obviously you can't, you can't say, you know, I would be lying up here through my teeth if I didn't say money. Money's also <laughs> a motivation. So uh -huh. it's a combination of everything. Yeah. Can you take me through the process of, of coming to Baltimore? You know, I had, you had worked out or yeah. come for a visit earlier yeah. and then it took a little bit of time and then ultimately you decided this is the right place. Can you take me through that? Yeah, um, I I came for a visit, I want to say, in July. Yeah. And um, we had conversations and whatnot, but I just think we were too far off on the money part right. and um, uh, too far of, like, you know, what my role would be. There was too many unknowns at that time, mm -hmm. um, and I just wasn't comfortable with it. And then eventually there were some injuries here, and my role was going to increase, so I felt comfortable enough to come and I enjoyed the environment. I enjoyed the coaches. I enjoyed the personnel. I enjoy Ozzy. I enjoy, you know, a lot of behind the scenes people that were really good to me mm -hmm. and just with the conversations and then the players and the conversation with the players being on a team that's going to be competitive, that you knew was going to have a shot that mm -hmm. you knew could, had the potential to be really good. And we still have the potential to be really good. Uh, that was a big draw to me. And, yeah. you know, it, turned out to be really good I also had the Raiders so it was kind of an easy decision for me um picking this decision right. did, did you feel was is that a hard wait, in go back to July yeah. and you leave here we were all kind of like I wonder if it's gonna yeah, happen I was like yeah like that you were mad at, you yeah, were mad I, was, at, I was mad I yeah. was mad at Eric but <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay to say that yeah. like I'm yeah. sure Eric was mad at me yeah, yeah. It, it's it, interesting because you, you basically come here and you have the visit and it goes well ish <laughs> like yeah. you it felt well, well enough yeah, for you to went, ultimately be sitting yeah, here it went good all the way until the end until right? he, <laughs> he gave you the number <laughs> slide yeah, 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 yeah. Like, exactly yeah um no but honestly it's 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 all good like i'm here for a reason yeah. they ended up you know uh, we ended up being a good marriage and yeah. eric's been awesome to me he's been really cool you know um and it's worked out really good and i just hope i can continue to um, be a light and continue to be a good teammate and a good player. That's I'm curious cool. about that because, like, is is it hard for you? I mean, it sounds like maybe it wasn't, but basically to like to walk away and not take whatever is presented to you at that time. Maybe it's somebody like, else is going to come. Right? Yeah, but like, but 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 you don't though. you don't, right? you don't necessarily right? know. Yeah. Like you yeah, you're, right. you're you're betting on yourself. Yeah, for and, sure. And was, I think what's the problem is is like. <sighs> how do I articulate this? Like for me, it's like, what are these other teams watching? Like, mm -hmm. and then people are shocked that I'm doing this mm -hmm. here. And now it's like, well, what the hell have you been watching? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And at least that's five for, sacks the past four years. That, yeah, that's a, that, but that's not just me. That's a lot of players that are in my position as yeah. a old, uh, a more experienced, there, there we go. I almost <laughs> caught myself a uh, more experienced player in the league. I think, people forget that some of these players can still play at a high level. Yeah. And I, I understand the business aspect. I understand you want to develop. I understand cheaper. I get all right, of that. Right, right. So um, it just worked out and it's been positive. And I just want to, you know, continue to focus on the positivity that the Ravens have shown me. They've been really good to me. They've been really good to Clowney. They've been really good to all the um, experienced players on our team. And we're really meshing really well. And we hope to continue that um, mesh and continue to have that ball rolling. Yeah.
Yeah. It se- it seems like that is a big motivating factor just kind of even beyond yourself is just to prove for these more experienced seasoned guys that like the league's wrong about us. It's kind of it kind of reminds me of like the whole running back debate, you know, yeah. a little bit this offseason where running backs like what the hell? You yeah. Know? That's and, very true. Yeah, Good and point. it's like pass rushers too are saying like, look, you know, we we have kind of found our game. Like, there's a lot of value to these more experienced pass rushers. Is that true for you? Yeah, you could say that. I, yeah. I just think personally that was my position. Right. Other people, you know, may not have that same position that I have. Yeah. But that was just my opinion towards it. Gotcha. Were you watching Ravens games when you before you came back here? Yeah, I like, would because I was doing picks uh, for different teams on uh, like who I thought was going to win and yeah. lose. So I was watching everything. But just as a you were just watching as a fan, like were you like yeah. thinking like, all right, I'm probably going to end up there? No, I had no idea. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I had, I had no idea what team I was going to go to. I literally was sitting on my couch like. <laughs> A normal fan watching games. You know? Interesting. Because yeah. it's like, it is crazy. You're sitting there watching games. You're doing pics. You're doing media or whatever. And, and then all of a sudden it's like, now you're, you're, you're now up. you're, now you're on the field. Yeah. And like this team that you just kind of were watching casually, yeah. you're suiting up with. Yeah. But I was ready. I put a lot of time and effort into my backyard by myself, setting up cones, setting really? up drills. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I was ready. I was ready for this moment. I mean, to come off the couch and then go into the Cleveland game and have a little impact that I did with the limited amount right. of snaps that I got. Like that was all you know, I that's not by accident. Yeah, that wasn't by accident <laughs> at all. I trained a specific way and, you know, I've been able to lean back on that training now and I still focus on that same training, if not amplify it a little bit more. Right. But I mean, for me, that's I knew this was going to happen. It was just a matter of when. Mm-hmm. What kind of what pass through uh, rush moves are you putting on your kid in the backyard? <laughs> you straight power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? it's actually on my wife. Get out, <laughs> Get out of the way, babe. <laughs> I'm curious, you know, because I'd always thought of you, you know, in the New England defense as like, you know, very much a Swiss Army knife, really good in coverage. You had shown that over your career, and now it seems like you're like, I want to rush the passer. Like, yeah, give me those snaps. Why? Why is that? Um, cause you can get paid a lot more. <laughs> um, I love, I, be honest, yeah, I love it. Yeah. That, and I would say I, that's what my strength is. That's what yeah. I did in college. I'm, um, if you go back then I had 13 and a half sacks my junior year. I think I had five and a half my senior year and missed about 20. So <laughs> I think that's where I'm comfortable. That's where I, I know I'm best at. And it's just kind of focusing on one thing versus like trying to do a bunch of things yeah. and hone in on that and go get it. I mean, you could have a career year in sex. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, you got three I right better. now. Your career high is six. Uh, Are we con- including like postseason oh uh, sure yeah sure. I, I, believe, I believe it's eight eight yeah, yeah. okay all right well yeah. we, we postseason is postseason's yeah. gonna be part of this team too yeah. right so yeah. okay so we can i mean i'm one long I'm, postseason I'm just one game at a time right now i'm arizona yeah i know that might be a previous employment answer but like <laughs> I, i'm i'm like legit focused on like one game at a time yeah. because so much can happen in a game and after a game so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm curious what you take of uh you know, you you've I'm sure had perspective of the Ravens from the outside looking in. Like, what has your impression been of the culture and the operation here since you've arrived? Oh, that's another good question. Um, perception, honestly, I really didn't have. I didn't really like say good or bad or anything. Mm-hmm. I just from the distance, it's always been like they're very competitive every year. Even team like they play and incredibly competitive even when they were you know struggling in a Mm -hmm. season every game was like down to the wire it seemed like so I always respected how they played but I've never had like oh that team sucks or I hate playing them you know Mm -hmm. Um, or I like playing them like the Jets I love playing the the Jets (laughs) Um, anything like that Um, but since being being here it's been honestly first class um family oriented which has been awesome like you can bring your kid to work mm-hmm. and everybody's like it's normal like that's that was different for me um and just the the put the input that you can have you know something mm-hmm. that i may suggest or um like i'll give you a little insight it was really cool to have um you know todd he's been kind of uh 
not I, w- I don't want to say struggling, but I want I want to say the right word. Um, he hasn't been able to uh, make everybody happy, right? In mm-hmm. the in with the red area and just mm-hmm. you know a lot of fans criticizing him mm-hmm. and you know still working on you know being here his first year getting his you know mm-hmm. um, boots on the ground here and just organizing everything and I think it's been kind of unfair to like jump at him saying like oh this you know his offense you know blah blah but whatever right, you right, want to say but right. just being able to like see his creativity over the weekend and then go give him his props like. Mm-hmm being able to go say like you killed it man you like deserve and to see him get a game ball like yeah. and get honored for that and it it was awesome to see and be a part of and give him his props and his flowers yeah. for that game yes we need it for the rest of the season <laughs> but just that sp- particular moment yeah um of him getting honored for the work that he put in, um, the extra work that he put in with Lamar running, um, the plays to a team, you know, executing offensive line, all of that was really good. And to see him get his flowers was like really cool. That's I cool. saw you having a, a long conversation with Mike McDonald walking out onto the practice field last week, I want to say. And okay. it feels like you two have kind of struck up a, a good relationship also. Yeah, that was that was a good conversation. Hopefully, um, you know, it, it'll – It'll show on one of these Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't you wait. Yeah, yeah, don't you yeah, no. yeah, the it's Cardinals been, are definitely listening to the lounge. <laughs> yeah, it's been good. Um, obviously, he and I are actually similar in age. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we were able to have conversations about different things and yeah. different schemes. Um, and it's been fun. Yeah. Hey, yeah you, is that how you always been? Kind of like having that rapport with with coaches and feeling for you know feeling I guess empowered to give some thoughts or insight or yeah I wouldn't say it's that it's more of just conversations about their scheme and how they see things and you know I've I've been able to have the green dot in my career mm. multiple times so mm. it's like I've been able to see how a coordinator thinks and what what are, what are you thinking in this situation or why this call and that just to get a better idea of how they are how they're wired you know what they're thinking so you know in situations I understand why he's calling this and what he's thinking and I'm able to you know translate that to a younger guy in the middle of a game where it's like they may not be thinking that but hey he's calling I know he's calling this because of you know we're in the high red they their keys are to do x y and z and i'm able to say hey be aware of these plays that's why we're calling this real quick that's why we want more seasoned guys right there that was (laughs) case in point right there (laughs) yeah that's funny i just i've always had a high iq in the game and being able to steal a play or two in the middle of the game can show a lot um and yeah it's yeah. good. You, you talk about previous employers and you're a two-time Super Bowl champion, yeah. right? So you know what it looks like, right? Mm-hmm. Is is there something that you see as a consistent theme among <laughs> Super Bowl winners that you have to have? And do you see it here <laughs> with the Ravens? Honestly, I don't even I don't even like comparing teams or yeah. every year is different. Every circumstance is different. Every game's different, Mm -hmm. and I think it's just a mentality, and um, I like what I see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And and another team that you used to play for, the Lions. Uh Uh-huh. Was there any special motivation for you beating them? (laughs) No, because I I honestly didn't play that much there, so I (laughs) I didn't, you know. They drafted you in the second round. What what the heck? A tidbit on that is my position coach, legit, for two years that I was there, told me, you're a good player. We don't know where to put you. That's mm. crazy. Yeah, crazy. That's why I said, well, why the hell did you draft Right. Me? Right. But he would you think know. he has some input in the draft room. <laughs> you would, you would yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I ended up, you know, being a general manager's pick. He ended up getting fired in mm. year two. So just mm. see, I saw the business really quick as a, as a young player. Um, it didn't work out there, and that's okay. Um, ended up getting traded to an awesome spot for me to help flourish. Um, ended up getting a big contract and then that whole fiasco. So I've had a lot of experience, and I'll be able to um, – 
talk a lot of different points uh when i'm done playing and <laughs> hopefully get a lucrative deal you know talking on a podcast or, something yeah. or be on tv we'll always have you on the line I, I, I like it. It. I we like don't it. have Fantastic. we don't have the lucrative deal part yeah, of it yeah, but it's that. coming hey it's coming it's coming yeah yes there you go it's coming it's, <laughs> hey, it's coming exactly yeah. so you're you're a proud B- byu guy yeah uh but last week you attended ball so hard university i did yeah so i did what did you think of your experience at B S H U. That was a little tongue twister, yeah. right? Um, honestly, it was amazing. It was amazing to have those type of legends um, at the bank. Yeah. Um, my first time at the bank, so to have that mm. atmosphere and that um, kind of those those kind of legends in a building was quite an honor. Right. Um, me knowing Haloti personally was awesome. It's mm. always good to see Big Brother. Yeah. How do you? I saw that. How yeah. Do you know Haloti? We just. Uh, he's basically my cousin. I, I saw you <laughs> yeah. say cousin. I, yeah. I went, went looking up. I was like in the family tree. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's uh, kind of so- confusing. They go like a million <laughs> ways when you're Polly, right? So, um, it was good to see him. Um. You know, it, it it was awesome to see uh, Suggs in the tunnel before the game, and yeah. just that mutual respect. He didn't, we didn't say anything, but just you know, a head nod, acknowledging each other and respect. I've really admired what he's done in his career and how he's done it. Yeah. Um, he was really that dude. And obviously, when you have a name like Ball So Hard University, <laughs> like you're that dude. So it was just cool to, um, you know just acknowledge a legend like that and have the fan base and be a part of that. It was a really cool experience. Yeah. Well, the, you, you're playing like that dude this year and a lot of guys on this defense are, yeah. like, this defense is good. It's legitimate. And yeah. there's a lot of pride can on I this cuss? defense. You can, yeah, yeah it's, you a, it's a, a podcast. Of, you got a lot of assholes. <laughs> 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 I got a good way. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Guys that are hungry. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, and so you like that mentality is what's needed. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like this defense, like you, uh, I think Roquan sets the tone in terms of like, and, and veteran players like yourself do as well. But like, I, I the sense that I get and everything that I hear from players on this defense is like, we're confident. We're not scared. We're going to tell you what we think. Yeah. We're going to be unapologetic. Unapologetic a holes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not allowed to, but yeah. you can. And and it and I think that carries over to the way that you play the game. Do you see it that way too? Yeah, uh, I do. You know, I think we're starting to gel together too like a lot of us um you know myself jd some other guys coming from different places coming together with the core that they have here and you know just getting on the same page and um working together and you know especially in the d-line group of not rushing together until like right now so we're still there's still such a high ceiling and guys that have been injured doff and coming back and just getting in a gel to um really play off each other and see how you know how we can push each other Mm -hmm. it's been really really good fun and i hope to continue that trajectory that we have and continue to win games yeah that's awesome well thanks for joining us man this has been really cool very enlightening and uh best luck the rest of the year awesome thank you man i appreciate it i do have to say i'm i'm boys with eric so don't don't (laughs) don't don't take what i said that we're not cool you're good you're good good. (laughs) absolutely that's great (laughs) it all worked out thank you Welcome back to the Seat Geek Studio. Big thanks to Kyle for stopping by here. We really enjoyed the conversation with him. Also, we want to give a shout out to our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook, which is an official sports betting partner of the Baltimore Ravens. They have a limited time offer running right now. You don't want to miss this. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. If you're a new customer, you can get a deposit bonus up to $1,000. Again, that is at DraftKings Sportsbook. You got to use the promo code, which is FLOCK. Okay. Mm. You need to be physically present in Maryland and 21 or older to play. For help, visit mdgamblinghelp.org or call 1-800-GAMBLER. We also want to let listeners know that since 2019, the Ravens and Lidos have teamed up to fight addiction through the Tackling Addiction Campaign. For every tackle, pick, and fumble caused by the Ravens' defense, Kyle Van Noy is definitely going to have some of those. A couple sacks. I mean, he's got three already this and year. And fumbles, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Lidos and the Ravens raise funds to tackle addiction. This Saturday, October 28th, is DEA's National Drug Take Back Day. This effort occurs twice a year to help reduce overdoses by offering a way for the community to safely dispose of unneeded medications from their homes. 
To learn more on how to participate in your community, go to www.dea.gov backslash take back day. Together, we are united in the fight to keep our communities safer and healthier. So great stuff from Kyle. Very transparent guy. Very honest. <laughs> uh, love that. And, you know, it, it is great really, interview. He's got a future in media. Uh, for sure. He's going to take one of our he's going to take your job. Someday. Oh, <laughs> yeah. um, no, I, I just think he's what's interesting about him is it feels like that chip on his shoulder is really kind of just a long standing thing. Like you talked about where even going back to when he was drafted by the Lions and them not really feeling like they had a position for him, like he's just not really you know, it been able to kind of thrive in spurts of mm-hmm. his career, right? And now getting, you know, up to his age, it's like teams questioning, okay, does this guy still have it? And he still feels like, yeah, like there's a lot of untapped potential here, right? Yeah. And to, to have that um, imbalance of perceptions can certainly motivate Well, it's, it is crazy. It's like early in his career, it's, well, you're, you're a positionless player. We don't know where to put you. Right. So then, then he had success. But now it's like you're too old, you know, and right. so so like, and he he's felt like he's had this potential that's been untapped even in recent years, yep. and he goes to these new teams like, wow, you're really good. He's like, I know, <laughs> I've been telling you, right. And so like now, but but then all of a sudden like you you become a veteran player and now it's like, well, you're too old. Oh, actually, you're not too old. You can come in here and be a really a really right. quality player. We should definitely stop like reacting super positively to his sacks. You know, it's like, you can't be surprised. It's like, oh yeah, this is what we expected. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to hear people anymore. Big point you. (laughs) Be like, wow, Kyle Van Noy, three sacks his first. No, no, no. This is what we expected. Yeah. I, I, like I, I said to him, I mean, I really think this, he could have a career season. I mean, like in terms of a sack production, like, and then, and then I think he will, as he continues to prove a lot of people wrong, you know? And I think that like, but Jadavion Clowney's on that path too. Well, that's a crazy thing. Like you have multiple guys. This is what happens when you lead the league in sacks. Clowney, Matabike and Kyle Van Noy all on pace to have career seasons. It's pretty incredible. Now, you know, it's, it's a long year. You got to keep it up, all that stuff. But Kyle Hamilton, Kyle Hamilton. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Got to keep going. Got to keep going. (laughs) Arthur Millette. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Everyone's having a career year in sacks. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's incredible. And, and it's a testament. You know, I hate to... You don't want to give too much credit to Mike McDonald and his coaching staff. They're deserving... Everybody's deserving the credit. The, the players are doing it, yeah. right? And so I think, to Kyle's point, Mike and the coaches and, and Chuck Smith, they're all doing a good job of coaching the pass rush. And it's not just the outside linebackers of Chuck Smith. He's working with the defensive linemen. Like you're seeing some of the same moves from those guys, right? Uh, so Chuck Smith deserves credit. Mike McDonald, his scheme, you know, very creative pass rush blitzes and whatnot. That deserves credit. And then the players, mm-hmm. you know, for, for executing at a high level. So, uh, you know, the Ravens aren't in the credit game, uh, but I think all of them deserve it for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think that like I the where I give the coaching staff credit is helping these players. We've seen it now with multiple players who have come in late in the process. Kyle's one, Clowney's another, Roquan last year. Now these are all really high end players, so it helps when you have high end players making this transition. Right. But you have players who have come in and basically stepped in immediately and had a big impact. Yeah. And so I give the coaching staff credit for basically building a defense that allows players to come in and do that. And then also working with them in order to make sure that they're up to speed. And yeah. so, look, I, I, I've been really impressed with Kyle. And it's like, again, we, we've mentioned this before, but, you know, the big one of the biggest questions slash concerns coming into the season was the pass rush. Mm-hmm. And it has been one of the strengths of the team. Absolutely. And adding Kyle Van Noy, the reason they ra- the Ravens signed Kyle Van Noy is because they felt like they needed some support in that area. And well, he's David provided Ajabo that. went down with an injury. Odafe Owe went down with the ankle. You know, I think there was, it wasn't clear exactly whether Ajabo was going to miss the rest of the season yep. or not. And so they went and made this move and it's been a good move. And on top of it, Ojabo is going to come back. Owe is back and already had a great game against the Lions. And so the rich keep getting richer at a spot where people thought the Ravens were poor. Yeah, the other one too is Tyus Bowser, who's yet to play a game this season. Yep. You know, just on the injury update there, the update is that there's really not an update, to the be honest. update update? Yeah, I mean, John Harbaugh said last week, you know, it's become a little bit more complicated. Could have an announcement on that front. Tyus has spoken on his radio show, just kind of in vague terms a little bit, that yeah. says, like, he's working, he's trying to get back. The goal is to come back this year. But he's not provided any clear... <laughs> 
timeline or timetable for when that's going to be. And this week, John Harbaugh was asked about it again um, and basically said no resolution on that front. Yep. So, as it stands right now, Tyus is still on the non-football injury list. When he gets back on the field, if he gets back on the field, is anybody's guess. Yep. Um, but the good news is the Ravens have some really good outside linebackers on this team right now. Well, they're going to get cranked up this Sunday <laughs> in Arizona. This is the old adage, you can't have a letdown game. Right? Yep. You're coming off a huge win against a really good Lions team. You're feeling great. Now you're going against a Cardinals team that's one, you know, has one win on the season. right? And you can't have a letdown game against the Cardinals, who you know, they have talented players on their side too, one of which I think that's going to be talked about a lot this week is Marquise Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go back and revisit that a little bit, sure. the whole Marquise Brown situation. So obviously the Ravens leading wide receiver, first round draft pick, playing well. I mean, he had some good years here in Baltimore, eclipsed a thousand yards uh, and then requested to be traded. Yeah. Uh, the, Eric DaCosta obliged, uh, trade him for a first round pick and the Ravens got Tyrell Linderbaum. Yep. Now, you fast forward two years after that, the Ravens draft Zay Flowers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's become their number one wide receiver really off the jump. Mm -hmm. uh, big credit to Zay, big credit to coaches, everybody. Um, I think this has really worked out well for the Ravens. I, I do. You yeah. know, I think that Marquise... Uh, He's doing well in Arizona. You know, he leads them right now, 383 receiving yards. But it remains to be seen, is he going to get that big contract after this year? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, who knows? I mean, it, you, I'd be just be guessing. I think that, like, you know, when he's when he's talked about it, you know, he felt like he wanted a new a, a change of scenery, a new opportunity, uh, a place where he felt like he could take his talents to the next level. Also, when he got traded there, of course, you know, Kyler Murray's <laughs> one of his best friends. Right. And Kyler Murray was a starting quarterback who has not played at all this year because of his knee injury coming that he suffered last year. So he's mm -hmm. still working his way back. Right. You know, lots of questions in Arizona about all that uh, on all that stuff sure. uh, when Kyler gets back on the field and, and all that. He's practicing right now, but not expected to play by right. this Sunday. You're right. It is. It's it's a big question mark there um, on, a, on a lot of levels. So Holly was in the last year of his rookie contract. Yep. Does he resign there? Does he go elsewhere? His name's been floated out the trade deadline. You know, if the right. Cardinals were to look to move, would they trade him? I don't know where any of that lands. You know, I think that it's always we, with these trades, like, I don't know. It's always tough to look back and see and think like, well, what could have been or, um, you know, th this would he have been happier here now? I don't know. You know, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, but I like where the Ravens are. Like, I love the fact that they got Tyler Linderbaum. Right. Um, and I love the fact they got Zay Flowers. And I think that like those two players are cornerstone pieces of this team in the short term and will be for the long term. Absolutely. So... I don't know. Hollywood had some good years here. He topped a thousand yards, like you mentioned, his last season here. Yep. Um, you know, he wanted to go somewhere else. So who knows? We'll see. He's definitely a player for the Ravens to watch out for on Sunday. You know, Joshua Dobbs is their quarter quarterback. Um, Right now, James Conner, he's on IR, so he's not going to be a factor in this game. And so this is a game, I think, for the Ravens where they they should they should win pretty strongly. Yeah. I would say coming off that Lions game. I mean, you're, you're facing a Cardinals team offensively. I'm talking about 19th. Now, they've been a little, you know, they've been pretty good, but really it's been the run game. They've sixth in rushing, but that a lot of that was with James Conner. Yeah. Um, and, and defensively, they ranked 28th in the league in total defense, right? So Ravens offense coming off a big game against the Lions, now going off against the 28th ranked defense. You should have a good day. Well, here's here's the thing about the Cardinals. Buda Baker's returning for them. Though, I think so. a lot of people coming into the season kind of picked them to be one of the worst teams in the league. You yeah. know, a bottom five, bottom three team. And they've actually, I think, played better than most people expected. I right. mean, their one win is against the Dallas Cowboys team, and it came at a point where everyone was like, man, this Cowboys team is the best team in the league. Exactly. So, so you don't want to be that team. Basically, basically, what you're talking about, the whole letdown game possibility, yep. they've already delivered that to the Cowboys. Exactly. So, like, are they capable of it? Uh, yeah, we saw it a few weeks ago. They just did that. Right. So, like, they can do that. And they've actually, beyond that, they've played some teams tough. Like, they've been in, been in these games. They've played some tough games. Yep. You know, you mentioned Hollywood. He has, obviously, big play potential. Um, and so, like, uh, you... you you definitely can't sleep on him. You can't sleep on him. And I don't think the Ravens will. I just, I think to John Harbaugh's point that he said on Monday, you know, I would be, very, he said he would be very disappointed if guys didn't realize how this league works, that it's yeah. a week to week league and you can get knocked off your pedestal at any point. 
Mm-hmm. Right. That's just how it works in the league. We see it every single it's just so it's so funny that every single year people are like, Man, it's crazy this year. Some of these games are wild. I didn't expect that. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, but we say that every single year. That's yeah, just yeah. how the league works. And so you you certainly hope that the Ravens know that these are a bunch of locked in dogs. <laughs> and to Kyle Van Noy's point, you know, beyond dogs, he's got a different <laughs> word for it. And uh, so I, I expect them to go out and take care of business. Yeah, I th- I think this defense is um is just going to continue to play at a really high level. What I yep. really want to see, it's I think, is consistency second. from the offense. And yeah. like Lamar Jackson said after the game, like, look, it's great, I'm ha- it's good that we had this one game, but like we do this every week, yep. you know. And you look, you're not going to have 32 point wins every single week like that's not realistic in the nfl but the consistency of execution of the way that the system operates i think that you can have more consistency in that regard so like i'm not making mistakes really i mean it's the ravens are shooting themselves in the foot too mm -hmm. much in their losses in particular yeah right and and going against the cardinals team that you're just better than that's that's really what i want to see like don't shoot yourself in the foot and you should win this game yep and and pretty comfortably i think but but they have shot themselves in the foot in exactly so it's like you you can't do that you know like you, you can't fumble the ball when you're going down there to take a lead like you did against the Colts. Right. You, you know, you can't have kind of a lackluster performance in the second half like you did against the Steelers and right. turn the ball over. Like that's how you're going to find yourself into trouble. If you start turning the ball over, Drop, start having drops, drops obviously. like then you're going to be in a difficult situation. And right. I think the Ravens are well aware of that. I don't think that will be an issue, but you know, those are the things that they need to focus on. And, and again, I would love to see this offense put together two, three, four game stretch where it's like, okay, now it's humming. Like for sure. All of a sudden the game against the lions, that's not the anomaly. That's the standard. That's just who we are now. That's standard. And then like you start rolling. That's what happened in 2019. Yep. And I think that like when you have a game like you did on Sunday, it gives you, flashbacks to 2019 so it is easy to take your mind there but mm-hmm. basically they started rolling and they didn't stop throughout the rest of the regular season yep. and so you hope that that can be the case for this team yep absolutely I think that we're going to get a <gasps> big <laughs> win in Arizona let's go let's go